So a few weeks ago, we are planning our Sunday services for my church and we're trying to work out how we can start the services uh, both a little bit smoother and on time. We run a 9.15 and an 11 o'clock service and we wanted a number of things to happen automatically. We wanted the audio that's playing in Pro Presenter to stop. We wanted the lights to come down on stage and a video to fade in and the audio track that accompanies that video to start playing. Then towards the end of that countdown, we wanted the band to be on stage, to roll out at the end of that track, say a quick good morning to church and go seamlessly into the first song. The challenge was we wanted to do this all automatically without anybody having to press a button. And we wanted it based on time, not on anybody triggering anything. Our techs would normally be grabbing coffee. Our band might be backstage chatting or praying. And most of our congregation would be outside in the cafe. So if we can have all of these elements automatically happen at exactly the right time, then all three groups would know to come into the auditorium for the start of the service. While we're thinking about this, Tyler from Multitrack showed me an app called Keyboard Maestro. And by powering that together with Ableton Live, we're able to achieve everything that I've just explained. So I'm going to show you how we're doing that in our Ableton template and how we've set that up in Keyboard Maestro. And maybe it'll inspire you to try something a little bit crazy as well. Let's have a look. So this is my Ableton Live session for that particular Sunday and I'm using the advanced Ableton Live template that's available from Multitracks. And you can see that we've got all of our markers, our songs, our MIDI automation for our lights, our lyrics and everything else that happens on a Sunday all in this one template. Now typically the way that we run our first set of worship is one song would flow into the next and into the next. So I really only have to press one button and most of the service will just take place until such a time as I want to repeat a section that I'm in or if I just want to loop on an ambient pad such as what's happening down here. But the first one, two, three, four, five songs actually are all going seamlessly back to back. So again if I can make this automation work I might not even need to press any buttons until the end of the first set which would be an interesting way to run Ableton as well. So let me show you what we did. Um, I first put in a marker just simply called Countdown. And I loaded in the tempo track, which matches the audio and the video. And then I loaded in the audio track so that it's actually playing from Ableton and not from ProPresenter. And we also loaded in the MIDI cues that make our lights on stage go black. Then we've got this uh, quick fire uh, four MIDI notes, which are being sent to ProPresenter, which is telling it to jump to the playlist, jump to a particular item in the playlist and play uh, that particular countdown video. That countdown video has the audio turned off in ProPresenter, so when that video plays, it automatically stops the playlist audio, or uh, the audio coming from the playlist, our pre-service playlist, playing as well. Then this just progresses along the timeline until we get to this section of the track, and at the very end of the track, our click joins, we've got an all-in, one, two, three, four, and then we're into our first song. In this instance, they're both in the same key, so it's quite easy to roll out of one, keep the energy on the cymbals and on the guitar swells, and then go straight into a live. Let me play the very end of that so you can hear what the band here. The band are cued to come on stage with about, a, uh, I guess, a minute left anyway, but this is what they hear. All in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's great, we could press a mini button, that could happen, that's nothing new. But how do we make this happen all by itself? Well, this is where we introduced a couple of things, um, and, but mainly based around Keyboard Maestro. The first thing that I did is I simply just set up a little key map. It could be MIDI, but for speed I did it with a key map, and I gave that marker the letter I for intro. And then I went over to Keyboard Maestro, which um, is over here, there we go, Keyboard Maestro. And I set up three basic mac macros, two are used on a Sunday and one that's used as a test. What I did is I set these macros to only work in Ableton Live, so they'd only work in Ableton Live 9 and it would work when the application is running and if it's available in any of the windows. Then inside the macro, this is the first one, this is called Start Service at 9.15 and it's triggered by time at 9.11 every Sunday and at 9.11 on a Sunday, it types I as a keystroke into Ableton Live. It waits for 0.5 seconds and then it presses the space bar to start that timeline. Now this could be a MIDI note, it could be um, 
uh, different keystroke, but this just worked perfectly for me. And then I've got another one for starting our 11 o'clock service, and this happens at 10.15, sorry, 10 56 every Sunday exactly the same happens and then I've got to start one so on a Friday when I'm just doing my media run through I can dial in any time on a Friday and I can just make sure that it's all working go back to Ableton Live so what's happening is at exactly 9 11 or at 10 56 it's pressing the keystroke I to jump to this marker and then it's hitting spacebar and the video will stop sorry the, the audio will stop the video will come on and the audio from Ableton will fade in and we're into our song Really clever way of using Keyboard Maestro and Ableton together to automate an element at a certain time every morning. There's loads more you can do with Keyboard Maestro. Uh, and maybe you want to go and check it out. The demo version is amazing. But as you just add new macros down here, you'll see that the list of things that you can do is endless. Um, we could have MIDI, we could have iTunes control, we could have um, various things happening to QuickTime players. Uh, you name it, it's all here. Um, and Tyler's done a really clever video on how to use one button to both select and start a song. That's also using Keyboard Maestro. Maybe check it out, see what fun things you can come up with. Take care, God bless.